This lesson is on using AJAX to update the database. We've seen it select from the database in the last presentation and display the data, but what if we want to get data in? I've set up a little form here called Add User, and I have two buttons where I can add a new user ID and password, but I've got a View Users button, which will pull back what we saw before. You can see we have the user IDs. This was in the previous lesson. We ran the code to do that, and I'm calling exactly that program, as you'll see in a moment. But say I need more users. My company's growing. Let's add another user. And we'll use the very creative name of user4 and pass4. So I click on Add User, and it says Insert Result Code 1. So supposedly it inserted, but you know, that's kind of geeky. I'd like to see that. So let me click on View Users. And we can see we have a user for and a pass for. In fact, just for the moment, I'll go over to phpMyAdmin. Now, this is what I had before. I haven't refreshed this. So if I hit Browse button again, it'll show me that I indeed have that information put on the database in the valid users table. Let's go back to the code. So this is the kickoff HTML file. Let's go down to the body first. We're starting to get more complicated here, so I'm going to talk through the things a little quicker that we've already covered. So notice on the button I have Add User function for adding and the View Users for the button there. Everything else is the same that we saw last time. Let's go all the way to the top. Standard XML code, View Users. I'm not going to belabor this one. This is what we did the last lesson. Same program, same data, same processing. I have the same function there, Process Data. Now, we have a different program this time. This is add using AJAX to update the database. And we're still getting a response text. All I really got back was, you know, how did the row get processed? Did I get one? I got one. I didn't get an error. I got a one. So that was good. And now I have a new function here called process add to process the data. Before I go there, of course, I need to get the user ID and password value that I entered, put them in the variables concatenate them together with the pipe, and that's what I'm going to send to the program. I'm sending a concatenated string, or a delimited string, might be more appropriate, to the data value. Let's look at the process add. It really doesn't do much. It just gets the ID of the valid user's div, and puts it there, and it just sets the inner HTML to be the return data. Remember, when we add a row to the table, we're just getting a report back of that one row was added. Really not much information there. So let's go look at the code. That's where things are beginning to happen. Here we have the insert. First, we get the data into my data, and then we explode it on the pipe. So we do have in PHP the list function, so we can break it up to user ID and password right away. Now, I've created a new file with some more common functions, 1008 common functions. And that's because I added a new function to handle the insert, update, and deleting of information. So far in the past, we just had one to handle the select and its results. So let's look at the insert statement. Insert into valid users is the table, the user ID and password, and the values. Remember how much of a pain it is? We've got to put the single tick around the user ID, and then the single tick, comma, single tick around the password, and then the closing single tick, and the parentheses. you got to get that right. Here's the beginning parentheses of the values there. So we have to have that right. Now, here's the new function that I wrote. It actually looks substantially like the select one, but it doesn't send back any array of data that we need to process because it's just given us a report that it was good. And I put this return number back here, and I print insert result code and the number. And it should be one if we're just inserting one row. Let's look at these common functions. I want to look specifically at this IDU results. That stands for insert, delete, update. We have to connect to the database. Of course, you've seen that before. That's still the same. Now here's the IDU results. So we connect to the database, and we issue the query on the statement. It happens to be an insert statement but we could use this for an update or delete as well, this function. And we have the same kind of error reporting. And the output, I just give the affected rows. In this case, one row was inserted. So that's the output of this function. 
unless we have some kind of error as well. And then I return that. So I'm just returning one being returned. It's as simple as that. I took out all the complicated processing that a select statement result needs. And over here is just the code we used last time to get the select results. And I just ran it intact as we did before. So this ends our lesson on using Ajax to update the database. In this case, we inserted a row into the database.